You're watching the Motorola Edge 2021 disassembly. I'll also be taking apart the Motorola Edge 20 series in different videos, so make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, I'll put links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Now we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a look at the plastic back plate. On the inside of the back plate, there are some graphene pads. There are 19 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, we can lift up and remove the top plastic cover. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying some heat and prying them off. The NFC antenna is located over here, and there are numerous antenna lines drawn on this plastic piece, which are these light color gray lines. There is also a graphite film over here, which sits over the battery. And the purpose of the graphite film is it helps transfer heat. There is also a dual LED flash located over here. On the back side, we can see the NFC connector here, as well as the dual LED flash board over here. The graphene film covering the connector for the battery needs to be peeled off and removed. Now the battery cable can be disconnected. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can disconnect the rest of the cables. There are three wire cables or coaxial cables on the bottom right corner of the board, which need to be popped off and disconnected. There is some more graphene film covering the connector for the front facing camera which needs to be peeled off so the cable can be disconnected. There is a single Phillips screw holding down the main board which needs to be removed. And once that's removed we can lift up and remove the main board. The top camera is the 8 megapixel ultra wide and macro lens. The middle one is the main 108 megapixel camera. And the bottom one is the 2 megapixel depth lens. The camera cables can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a secondary microphone located on the top corner of the board. And there's copper tape on top of the shield. This open space is where a 5G millimeter wave antenna would go. So I'm assuming if Verizon were to get their own version of this phone, it would make use of the space and solder points over here for one of the 5G millimeter wave antenna. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see thermal paste on top of these chips. On the back side of the motherboard, we can see a lot of thermal paste on top of the graphene film. The proximity sensor is located on top, and there's another microphone located here. The connector for the main camera is located here, and it can be disconnected by just popping it off. And there's a liquid damage indicator located over here, which is this white sticker with red X's on it. Once the graphene tape is peeled back, there's copper tape underneath on top of the shield. And then once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see more thermal paste underneath on top of the processor, RAM, and these two chips over here. Now it's time to remove the speaker assembly. There's some more graphene film on the speaker assembly. There are also a few more antenna lines. On the opening of the speaker assembly, there's a mesh filter. And here's the speaker itself underneath. The other ends of the coaxial cables need to be disconnected on the subboard. And then the flex cable connecting the main board to the subboard can be disconnected. There is one Phillips screw holding down the subboard which needs to be removed. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. The primary microphone is located on the corner of the subboard next to the charger port. The SIM reader is located on the back side and it does seem to be a dual SIM reader or a memory card and SIM reader. The reason I say that is because there are pins on the top and bottom of this reader. Then when we take a look at the SIM tray itself, the SIM card slots over here. And on the back side, there's a slot over here, but it's smaller than a SIM size and looks to be a SD card or memory card size. And there's a logo of it over here drawn with an X on it. So it's pretty much telling you not to put one in there since this version is advertised as a single SIM only. But from the looks of it, just like previous model phones, if you were to swap out the SIM tray and flash a software that has a dual SIM reader enabled or the SIM card and memory card reader enabled, those additional pins would start to work and you'd be able to make use of those features. There is also a rubber gasket around the charger port itself. 
The battery doesn't have any pull tabs to help you pry it off, so we're gonna have to use some isopropyl alcohol and get some around the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery is removed, we can see the screen cable, which is routed through an opening in the midframe. And this flex cable connects the main board to the subboard. So if you needed to replace the screen, you need to remove the back plate, as well as the screws on the top cover and remove the top cover, disconnect the battery cable and the screen cable, and then you'd pry off the battery to gain access to the screen cable, and then heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, and reapply your new screen and reassemble the phone. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner and is held down with the adhesive. There is another liquid damage indicator over here underneath the charger port. The flex cable for the volume keys and fingerprint reader are both routed through the opening in the midframe. So if you need to replace those, you'd actually have to pry the screen off as well. On the top corner, there's a plastic placeholder where the second 5G millimeter wave antenna would go. The earpiece is located next to the front facing camera and is held down with adhesive. As far as repairability goes, I give this phone a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.